welcome to the Zabush Arena. As your Branchy Wombs take on the Newton North Tigers, Mike Wassel and Jeff Post are on hand for BCAM TV. And Jeff, a Newton North team struggling this season, 2-7, and seven, Braintree 5-3-2. and two. These two teams have played each other once. Newton North actually beat Braintree earlier this season, so revenge on the mind for the Wombs. What do you have going into this game for Braintree? Yeah, struggling team. Well, like you just said, Mike, they beat Braintree to start off the season 3-1 to one back in the beginning of December. So Braintree both trying to avenge their loss from earlier in the season. They're also coming off a tough 6 to nothing loss against Fon Fon Academy this past Sunday. So the Wamps uh, trying to get back on track. They've got 12 points with 10 games left to go. They need eight more to make the tournament. And this Newton North Tigers team that's only two and seven should be uh, right for the picking if you're Braintree to get two more of those points in the scorebook. So Braintree so far this season has yet to lose here at the Zapusta Arena. They lost that game actually against Pompon. Pom. That was at Shea Rink, so that was technically a home game, but it wasn't played here at the Zapusta Arena. So Braintree heading into the, today's action. Again, perfect here at the Zapusta Arena. Just the one loss at home, that was against Pon Pon. Braintree, as always, with Molly Devlin in goal. And she'll be going against Livy O'Connor for the Tigers. Again, the first goal of this game will be very important. Braintree, a team that can score a lot. And we know that Newton North gives up a lot of goals, as that one is saved by Devlin. Newton North winning that initial faceoff. And despite having to come back to the neutral zone a couple of times already to stay on sides, he's doing a nice job here in the first opening seconds. Good forecheck right there. Keep it alive. Swung around the boards and back as far as center is Stimson. Now Virgil back in her own ends. Plays it to center where it's carried in by Zayden. Zayden goes down, swings it into the slot. Still kept in the zone at the blue line now. It's high off the glass. Kept in and a whistle. Maybe play with the high stick. Well, they're going to send Berto to the box. I didn't see the penalty. It was must have been away from the play. I wasn't looking that over there, but a tripping penalty to Birchill. She'll go to the box. Oh, early chance for Newton North on the power play. And Braintree's best player in the box, Birchill, leads the team. Nine goals, nine assists so far this season. So Tigers looking to capitalize. Pon Pon scoring twice in the first period as Braintree has a potential break. As Seriani is back checked and has the puck knocked away. Great defensive stance there, Sarah Zayden. That's what Seriani's done all season long, playing strong defense, using her speed. Great penalty killer. Scored the game winner against Weymouth earlier this season. And also had an empty net a couple games ago, back against Framingham. A lot of open ice here for Newton North. Got Braintree back defensively. Shot taken and it goes to the end board as Braintree sends it down the ice. Benton basically getting credited for that save. She got in the passing lane, disrupted it. Braintree did a good job clearing it out. Just 30 seconds to go here on the first power play of the game. Tigers able to get the puck into the zone, but they're really not using much speed. As Braintree's able to clear it back to the blue line, kept in at the point. No Swung really, around the boards. No one really gaining control of it here in the Braintree end. It's kind of a little bit stationary, I guess that's the better word, as it's played back to the point. Sent down low here in the final three. As the power play's over, Virgil's out of the box. The PK for Braintree. Last ditch there from Newton North. They had a nice centering pass off the stick of Burdone. But her intended target a little bit off the mark. She was looking for Hamilton there right in the slot, but good PK there from the Wumps. One off the body of Virgil and it's backhand into the zone. Frankie looking for fresh legs. Here with 11.50 to go in the opening period. Going around the boards. Good contact as Frankie looks to pinch at the blue line. It squirts out and now a potential three on two developing. Oh, great defense. Nice poke check as Summer is able to knock that one away. 
right at the post as that one hit off the skate of Devlin, bounces back behind the goal. Right now, Newton North bringing some pressure early in this game. We talked about Newton North having one of their two wins against Braintree this season, and they certainly know that they can play with the Womps, and Braintree looking to return the favor here at home as Yaxter with the first touch. Braintree so far, a couple times hitting it into their own player. That's the second time into the body. Some friendly fire from the Womps. So far the Tigers have done a nice job from their own blue line. Braintree's not been able to get the puck much past that area of the ice. In North is just planted down right in front of their own blue line. All the action in the Braintree end so far. When ricochets to the high slot and the shot from a distance out is wide of the goal. The chance was for Natalie Lynch. Missed the net. It's always tough from that spot there, right from the dot. You'd like to see that one go on goal. Anytime you miss wide of the goal, it sometimes wraps right around and clears itself out. I know you see it on the power play a lot, but that's kind of uh, a missed opportunity for the Tigers to have controlled the play early in this game and now with an offensive faceoff. Well, Newton North really trying to get the offense going early. They've struggled scoring this season as well as giving up goals. They've had two games, or three games rather, where they've limited a team to four or less goals, one of which being the win over Braintree back at the beginning of the season. And they had an absolute dominant performance over Stoughton, winning 10 to nothing. But every other game they've given up at least four goals. So looking to get their offense on the board first here. They've done a good job controlling the puck in the offensive end. That's just about where Braintree averages, about three or four goals a game as the shot goes wide. And the second chance also wide. Hamilton with a nice couple of moves there to get the shot in on Devlin. Devlin with another save, and this time covering up with 9.37 to go in the opening period. Pretty good shot through a screen there from the point, and Devlin had to be alert. North still continuing to pound in the pressure here on the offensive end. Braintree has yet to get a shot in, or even really any sort of lengthy control in the Newton North end of the ice. Libby O'Connor's just been watching everything. Maybe here we go this time. Here's a chance now for Yaxter. It only takes one and a save by O'Connor was very square to the shot. Maybe a tale of games as last game against Fawn Pond. Braintree actually outshot Fawn Pond in that opening period. Closer to 14 to 2. But the two shots resulted in two goals for Fawn Pond. So Braintree looking to reverse the tide here and maybe get on the board even though Newton North has been able to control the opening few minutes. Well, it starts right with the face off. Good job by Braindry to win that one. Stimson's pass a little bit off the mark in the slot but win the face off in this end of the ice you'll get a chance to set up your offense. Nice work by Summers keeping that one at the point. Now a battle for it and played back to center. Frankie goes D to D and now looks to get it right back into the attacking zone. Out of the reach of Stimson, and that's going to be an icing with 8.56 to go. A virtual plan, kind of a defenseman role just now, back by the blue line, bringing it back out in the neutral zone. And she couldn't get back on side, though. Off the faceoff, Newton North with the win, and the shot again wide by Lynch. Wrapped around the boards. Newton North winning a lot of the races to the puck right now. A lot of those 50-50 battles as it's sent back to the blue line again. Kept in, but Haw able to backhand it out. It was deflected. No icing. Yeah, a bit of a whiff there from Sarah Zayden. Went to send it back in towards Devlin and just missed everything. Oh. Shot in on goal. <laughs> Juicy rebound. And, and they score. <laughs> as Norton puts it home. Norton gets a gift in front and cashes in to give Braintree the one nothing lead. So not the usual suspect for Braintree on the scoring sheet, but Norton playing some solid minutes this season and getting rewarded for the opportunity. Had a big juicy rebound. O'Connor probably wants that one back. Yeah. Beat O'Connor to the back of the net that time. It was kind of an awkward way, but it all started with the whiff from Zayden. She missed. Fenton kicked it back out across both blue lines. Braintree was able to pick it back up. Fenton took a long shot in. 
And then that rebound way out in the right wing faceoff circle. Norton's able to swing it back around like we saw Newton North trying to do earlier in this period. Good look at a goal. Rebound control so big in the sport of hockey. Nice block from Norton. That one, you can hear that ricochet from up here. And now it's right on her stick. Got another chance. Going two on two. Now two on three as Newton North back into the play. Just keep the puck down at this end of the ice. Get your offense going. Learn as Braintree this season has gotten better and learning how to play with the lead to see how they play this time. Duffy able to work it back into the Tiger end as Braintree works it around the boards. Getting a late and on. It's Fenton as the puck loose in the skates of Birdchill. <laughs> That would have been a pretty goal if she was able to corral that onto her stick. Yeah, I thought Stimson might have should have taken that shot right in the slot there. Try and elevate it over the right shoulder of O'Connor. Well, I was wrong. Summers is going to get credited for that assist, not Fenton. Stimson able to battle for it. Now Branchy with it. A shot from Birdchill and into the body. Developing play in front. Loose in the slot. Still loose as Birdchill on the other side now takes the shot and it goes wide. Summers with the pinch. And the Tigers able to knock it back out to center. Yeah, great defense, especially from Amanda Smith right in front of the net. She pulls it out here in front of the Braintree bench. Nice poke check. Race to Buck. Here comes Yaxter again. Yaxter's won a few loose pucks. And races to him as this one sends to the slot. Nobody home. Now played into the middle of the ice. And Newton North first on it. Brantry with a fresh line. Six minutes to go in the opening period and a fast-moving period. Newton North caught in the line change. Yeah, just thinking that Brantry might catch him a little off guard here. Not ready to get back on the ice. Brantry was in a little bit of a change themselves. Looks like they were changing the forwards up front. Now behind the net. Tigers have had some pretty good breakouts here in this first period, but as we mentioned, they've been pretty stationary around center ice, and they haven't had much speed going into the zone, and that's kind of resulted in a lot of flat-footed opportunities. Well, they're offside, so we'll get the face off here in the neutral zone right in front of Braintree. But like you said, Mike, the Tigers have... Move the puck into Braintree territory, but they haven't been able to do much with the open ice in front of them. Braintree's done a nice job clamping down with their defensemen. Collision there as Yaxter comes in with the shoulder. Oh. Incidental contact. You like to see that, though. They're going to let something go. They should allow that to be played. Both players going for the puck. It wasn't a malicious hit or anything. Oh, nice job by Fenton to keep that one alive briefly. Sent down the ice. Newton North does a better be job. Icing. <laughs> 4.54 to go in the opening period. The only goal scored by Nicky Norton to give Braintree the one nothing lead. Again, the Womps looking to go over 500 by three games for the first time this season. Looking to improve to 6-3-2. and two. Pick up their 13th and 14th point with the victory. Tigers breaking it out of their own ends as Birchill comes back to knock that one away with four and a half to go. Lucy is the one who moves back out to center. She was trying to split three different brain shoe defenders to win the race to the puck. Fenton does a great job just kind of being a wall there back in her own territory. Playing a strong first period. Brain shoe defense doing a nice job, especially Fenton, as you've already mentioned. <laughs> Coach Kevin Birchill a little unhappy with the positioning of his defenseman, though, back that play up. Well, I think what Branch is trying to do is get a little bit more aggressive, send in the defenseman, and they want the forward to rotate back. And sometimes at this level, it's, it's a little bit tougher because it's not really a position to come back and play defense necessarily, but it's a work in progress, and 
that's what French is going to have to do to be successful, especially with the injuries that have started to mount here for the Wamps. Well, so far tonight, they've done a nice job, as Newton North was doing earlier, clamping down on the blue line. Loose in the slot, and that one just goes by Devlin, who watches it go to the end boards. Three and a half to go. Again, another puck won by the Tigers. Everything can kept to the outside, though. Branchy doing a nice job keeping it to the perimeter. And now a chance for Birchill, who, who goes one-on-one. -on -one. With open ice in front of her. Looking to make the move, and a nice poke check better, from behind. A better defensive play from one of their co-captains, Alexa McCullough. Knocks it loose from Birchill. Not an easy task. Seeing a few good poke checks here in this first period. Dangerous. Obviously a dangerous attempt. Anytime you go for the poke check, you get a, you get anybody's skate and they're going to go down for a trip, but it's the most effective way to take the puck away. Too much zip on that pass. From the nice oh. pass in front and the chance and a save. <laughs> a beautiful setup in the slot as the Wamps had the opportunity for Stimson looking to give the Wamps the 2-0 lead. Yeah, great look there between Stimson, Yaxter, and Virgil to set that one up, but... Good awareness by O'Connor to not let that second one get by her. Looked like Stimson was trying to go high over the shoulder. Wasn't able to elevate it enough. And O'Connor, who really hasn't been tested much here in this first period. Tough when you're that close. Stop. That is a nice move. Shot and a score! Wow! <laughs> that one beats Devlin over the shoulder. One of the better wrist shots we've seen this season to tie the score at one. That Sarah one was Ziden. just outside of the circle. She took that one the distance, Sarah Zayden, with the goal, and making it even at one, but that was an impressive move there. And the sophomore. Sophomore defenseman. Good speed. So a 1-1 score as Zayden ties it at one. Frankie's goal scored by Norton. Devlin did get a good look at that shot. The shot just beat her cleanly over the shoulder in the corner. Good shot. How many players at this level can shoot consistently like that in the, in the corner of the net? 1-1, one, one, or a one-on-one -on -one matchup, I should say. So the wrist shot ties it at one, and Braintree has about a minute and 50 to go before they end this first period, looking to regain the lead. So a minute and a half to go in the opening period, knotted at one, sent back to center over the stick of Yaxter. Good move to keep it away from Yaxter. Hamilton. Centered, now back to the point. The shot and looking for the redirection in front, it wasn't able to hit the stick of Verdone. at the point and it just eludes the line. Now in the final 60 seconds of the opening frame. Another loose puck battle won by the Tigers. Brinkley slower to the puck right now. That's Newton North back to the blue line. Talked about both teams coming off a loss in their last game. It looks like Newton North has been the quicker team here in this first period, but both teams still tied at one. And Frenchy may be a little bit lucky just to be down or just to be tied right now at this point with the puck possession for the Tigers as Frenchy sends it back out to center. 25 seconds to go and offside. Half a stride offsides and a face off just outside of Frenchy's blue line. 23.8 to go. In a very fast moving first period, just one penalty. And that was against Birchill. Frankie one for one on the PK. Knocked back into the Braintree end as Fenton looks to wrap around the boards. He's cleared out. There you go. Norton sends it down the rink here in the final five as Newton North goes to play it. And that'll end the opening period here at the Tapusas Arena as the two teams play to a 1-1 tie after 15 minutes of action and Norton the goal scorer for Braintree.
and Zayden, the goal scorer for Newton North. So a 1-1 score after 15 minutes of play. A pretty good opening period on both sides, but I think if you were to give the advantage to one team, I think Newton North was a little bit stronger in that opening period, but Braintree certainly capitalized on their limited opportunities. Yeah, time of possession definitely in Newton North's favor. They did a great job controlling the puck. And initially did a nice job clamping down at their blue line, not allowing Braintree much of an advancement, but they got kind of a, a fluky but good-looking goal from Norton, took the lead, and then just a phenomenal play from Zayden at the other end. <laughs> PA announcer gave an assist, but I think that she took that herself unassisted, in my opinion. It was a great look from one end of the ice to the other. So, Braintree with some things to work on in between periods. We'll take a break as well here on BCAM TV. We'll be back for the second period after this. Welcome back to the Zapusas Arena, second period set to get underway. Mike Wassel and Jeff Poster on hand for BCAM TV, and after 15 minutes of play, one to one the score, as Branch going to go right to left for the second period. Opportunity in the opening seconds <laughs> in the slot. Good look there. The X are getting set up by Burchill. Again, the two of them have such good presence here on the ice together. They're playing together for the last few seasons. As freshmen, they started together. They play on the lacrosse team. So certainly chemistry between the two of them. And a fan of a shot at the blue line. Now it's loose in the slot. Branchy first on it. And it's Yaxter on the fresh sheet of ice. Looking to backhand it forward. And now she does. She's wrap it around. Now Newton North behind their own goal. Dangerous pass across the slot. Yeah. Burchill almost able to intercept that one. She was camped out there. Like you said, could have taken it away and then gone straight towards the net. This two on one. Two on one developing. Nice defensive play this time again. It was Fenton. And another dangerous play this time. Branch was able to clear it, but I think that's got to go for icing. Fenton didn't even have to expel much energy to knock that one loose. Still, great defensive play either way. McGurdy that time called for the icing. It was a good defensive play, but just a little bit too much on it as it carried down the ice on the fresh surface. Faceoff is won by Newton North, sending it towards the goal, and Braintree able to clear it to the end board. Summers backhands it up the rink. And pinned against the wall now is a battle for it. Braintree with three players along the wall. Fenton with it, sends it around the boards, back towards the blue line, and it gets past the blue line, back to center. Another yeah. miscue. As Newton North, very dangerous yeah, on the back end. Tigers are having a little bit of a struggle here with their passes. They're just a little too weak. And Braintree has nearly a couple times been able to steal them away and really advance the puck. Or they would be able to advance the puck if they can get a clean steal on them. What would have been a chance for a potential break as well for Braintree a couple times. Wamps have had a good couple of looks, and this one's fans some trouble there with Zayden, who had the only goal. And now it's cleared into the middle of the ice. Braintree at center will knock it right back in. Both teams right now, dump and chase method. Kept in the blue line by Yaxter, sent back out as far as center. Duffy back on her own end now. And Duffy gives it away. Nice play by Summers, able to save the bacon. And Branchy breaks out. No one's really been able to gain any sort of control here in this second period. Big collision. Summers gets taken out. Yaxter was tied up with the attacker for the Tigers. 
Loose in the skates. And sent into the slot and an opportunity, and this time Devlin able to grab it with the trapper. Good save by Devlin. She only had Summers in front of her to help, but she had no stick. And Devlin did a nice read of that puck, grabbing it with the glove and then covering it up on the reassurance. That was where Devlin was beat. Just about that identical spot on the opposite side of the ice earlier, but that shot, much easier of a save. It was down low. Face off again, won by Newton North. And a nice sliding oh, play nice for the move. block. Sirianni just sliding down, defensive position. Get low. That's Sirianni's prowess on this team. Good defensive player. Good penalty killer. As Devlin able to tie that one up. A couple of tests here for Devlin. Not taking any chances. Just cover up. Get the face off. Eleven thirty to go in the second. Face off won by Newton North, who's won the majority of these face offs here in the game. Played back to center. And right now Branch are just content to clear it out of their zone. You can hear Coach Burchill wanting him to skate the puck out. Probably the best method right now, because Newton North's been able to possess. And Braintree's dumping it back out, but no one's really giving chase to it. Sent back in towards Fenton. It's not gonna be icing. Wraps it around and branches on a change. Newton North has the numbers, but that one somehow eludes the three players that were on the way to it. The shot from Yaxter, and that one's That was off. a big missed opportunity for the Tigers. They had the puck in Braintree territory. Fenton wrapped it around, but any Newton North Tiger player could have gone over there and picked it up on the near side, and no one even gave an effort to go over and try and grab it. They would have had no one in front of them except Molly Devlin. We don't have a great angle from here to see where that, well, what happened on that play. It must have had to have jumped over the sticks because there was nothing else there. Two on two developing. And the backhander into the slot. Nobody home for Newton North. Loose along the end wall. Back at the point, the shot. And a redirection just goes wide. That was a nice deflection in the slot by Hamilton. That one certainly changed direction. Ziden with it now, and she's able to dump it in. Brancher clears it back out, and it's going to go for icing. The one rule I don't like about the high school level is even if your player is able to get there first, it's still icing if it's back from beyond the red line. I know it's player safety, but you know it should should be the first player to get to that puck, if, even if it's back behind that red line. You see it so often, especially with the empty net. Team's going to try and shoot it into the empty net. Face off, won by Newton North. Spending a lot of time camped out in this Braintree end. Well, they did and that in the first Devlin. period, too, and didn't have much to show for it early on. The next goal in this game is going to be very important. We're now at the halfway point of the game. Still tied at one. Kept in at the blue line. And Braintree with a chance. Two on three as Haw sends that one to the slot. Seriani sends it towards the goal and it reflects behind it. And now Newton North able to split the defense. Missed opportunity there. Haw elected to go for a pass, but Seriani wasn't there. You didn't really see that she had not come closer. If you hold on to that puck for maybe another second, the rest of your offense can catch up. Another change for the Wamps. Three on two developing now. Virtual trying to get back on the play. Nice centering pass. And now the Wamps have numbers the other way. Two on two as they go up and down the ice. The Axis sends it forward for Stimpton. No icing this time. Sent towards the goal. It's loose along the post. As O'Connor has it tied up. And Braintree storms the crease. Looking to poke in one with 8.45 to go. And a faceoff to the left of O'Connor, who really hasn't been tested too often here today but still a one-to-one -one game. Newton North with a beautiful centering pass there right in front of Devlin. Though. Again, a better defensive play from Fenton. Poked it out once again. That set up that brain tree attack. Now they get the face off in Newton North territory. Duffy with a shot from the point. Goes into the skates. Now in front of Chance, and it just oh. goes wide. Brief wraparound. Score! 
Stimson on the doorstep, and it's 2-1. to 8.32 to go in the second, and the Wamps take the lead, 2-1. Well, O'Connor lost sight of it as the puck went behind her. Stimson, the only one who could find it, picks it up. A wraparound from the other direction pushes it right past O'Connor's right leg. It looked like that was virtual, and the initial chance on the kind of the turnaround shot went wide, and Stimson, well positioned, Look able this. to put it home. Now Haw looking to give some more offense for the Wamps. So two goal scorers here today for Braintree. And not the two that you would expect. But Stimson has played exceptional this season and earned a spot on the first line with Birchill and Yaxter. Good push there at the other end. Hamilton and Lucy Verdone there at the tail end of it. Really challenging Molly Devlin there, trying to respond after that goal. It's a very welcome sight to see, though, for Coach Birchill, who's now seen closer to eight players score on this team. And usually at this level, it's more just three, four players that wrap up a lot of points. Usually, as you already mentioned, Virgil has 18 points on the season already. You kind of see two or three star players that really amass most of your point totals, but this Braintree team has probably six players that have close to eight points or so. Virgil and Yaxter have led the way. Simpson starting to rack up some points as well. Here's Seriani getting on the action. A couple of assists, a couple of goals. Seven and a half to go in the second. Both teams have traded chances here in this period. Braintree has gotten the only goal of the frame to take the 2-1 lead. Wide open in front. What a save oh. by Devlin, the second chance they score. Well, she did a great job on the first two opportunities. These teams go back and forth. And just couldn't cover up that third chance. Third time's a charm there for Newton North. So Ferry with the goal Ferry. to tie it. No longer than a minute and a half later than Braintree took the lead. It's now tied at two. Two evenly matched teams as Ferry knots this game at two. What a great initial save by Devlin, but nobody was there to clear it. The helpless feeling as a goalie, you gotta come with a great stop, and then it just kinda lays there in the slot, and right in the crease. At the blue line, it's sent in towards the goal. Brain tree looking to wrap it around. Played to the end wall. And now back at the point, the shot. And it's into the body of Seriani. Blocks that one down. Rinchy's got to pick up that puck. Lily McCordy had it right on her body and didn't make a move with it. Newton North able to keep it alive. Nice shot from the point and a save by Devlin. That one again finds its way through the traffic. The shot from McAuliffe. Pretty good defense for the Tigers. They have some pretty good shots from that blue line. We saw the defenseman already score here today, Zayden, in the first period on a nice shot. And off the faceoff, Branch is going to go on the power play. A tripping call coming off as Branch looking to get the extra attacker on, and Virgil loses possession. And Branch will go on the man advantage for the first time here today. I was right off the faceoff, stick caught in the skates. And Braintree draws the tripping infraction with 6'11 to go. Lucy Verdone with the penalty. We'll see what Braintree's top line here of Yaxter, Virgil, and Stimson. They can put one in with the man advantage. Five on four, the advantage for the Wamps. 125 to go here on the power play. Let's see if Braintree can set things up. In the attacking zone. A shot from Duffy. That one ricochets in front. And Birchill trying to jam it home as O'Connor clamps down on it. A good drive from Duffy. Birchill right there to pick up the rebound. Better move, though, by O'Connor just to come over and clamp down, like you said. Trying to find no space there to get it past there. Branchy switching the defense pair, trying to get the left-handed shot on the left blue line. There it is. 
Scott from Fenton and into the skate. Blocked in front at Threadkill. Now back to the point for Fenton. Takes the shot. And a pad stop. That was a nice shot from Fenton. Hear that pad stop a mile away, O'Connor. Losing that right leg. Good looking power play for Braintree. A lot of zone time. Working as Fenton takes the shot. And that one saved by O'Connor as well. Threadkill looking to redirect. Hey, Fenton did a good job elevating that one. Virtual just couldn't try to redirect that one midair. It's a tough job at any level. And O'Connor, she was glued in on it. Good start to this power play for Braintree. Already three quality looks in the opening 45 seconds. Another face-off won by Braintree. That's the key here. Win these face-offs. Set up your offense. Let's see if Braintree can set it up. Right now they've been playing everything at the blue line. See if they can work the puck a little lower. Set up a triangle. Loose in the slot. Played back at the blue line. And Duffy has it. Had some space to work with and can't clear it. Now they can, as it goes all the way down to Devlin. Nice job by Devlin to come out of her crease a bit. Keep that puck from going all the way to the back of the boards. Yaxter now leaves it for Birchill. Just five seconds to go on the power play, as it will elapse here. Brantley looking for one last chance. It's still oh. loose in the slot. <laughs> no one could find it. Looked like it got tangled up in Stimson's legs. And we still have an opportunity to set up an offense. Nice stick work from Yax to send it back to Fenton. And I don't know what they're going to call it. Are they going to call it interference with the goalie? A whistle. I don't see the net dislodged. I think that must be the penalty. It's got to be. No one, no one had no the box yet. Strange. Strange whistle there. Unless it got tangled up in the net in the back, but just they lost sight of it. I'm not sure. The only thing is, if they lost sight of it, the puck, the faceoff still should have been in the right. north end. Interesting. Well, we'll have to try and see if we can get clarification for that. That's a strange call. I don't have an answer for that one. Played back to center. Otherwise, a great job on the penalty kill, especially by Libby O'Connor. Had a couple of chances go in, and she made some beautiful saves. Probably the best stop was the shot from the point for Fenton with a pad stop. Frank is starting to pepper the goal now. Here in the second period, they've scored once. Took them about 15 minutes to really get the legs turning, but they've come out strong here in the second period. Sent down the rink. And it's going to go for icing. Face off one by Newton North, laying it back to the defense. Newton North starting to become a rival for Braintree. I know, especially in the sport of basketball, it's really picked up the rivalry. Played last night. Both teams. Sent back to center. As Newton North looking to nice chase move. Dumb it back in. Not a good pass. Nice steal, though, from Yaxter working it again to the attacking zone in the final 245, centering it to the slot. And the only player home was a Newton North Tiger. Race to the puck, and Braintree's going to win it. Another whistle. Too many men, maybe? Yep, too many men. That's what it looks like. So I didn't get the first call, but this one was pretty evident right in front of that bench. It's tough when you, especially at this level, they kind of let a lot of that stuff go. But the referee was right there and he caught him. Well, they get to pick who goes into the box, and that's Emma McKee, the sophomore. We really haven't seen much of tonight. 
So I'll be surprised if she's the one that comes onto the ice after the penalty. Shot is and it sticks in the pads as Newton North with a little extra from behind. That was Zayden who gave a forearm into the back of look like Seriani was crashing yeah. the net. She fell down right on top of O'Connor at the end of the play. I think it was more Zayden trying to protect her goalie, but still could have easily been a penalty. Would have put Branchy on a five on three. Fenton's got such a strong shot there from the defensive point. This is probably the most we've seen her shoot from the blue line in the home games that we've seen this season. Nice tape to tape pass as Branchy works it in three on three. Again, another man advantage for Branchy. Unsuccessful on their first chance, but they had four or five shots on the man advantage. Branchy setting up camp, and again, Fenton with the Ooh. shot. That went into the skates. That hurt. Looked like it was more on the leg of Amanda Smith. Seems to be okay, though. That's part of the job, though, trying to block those shots. You know you're going to feel that one, especially when it hits you right above the skate. Good redirect there by O'Connor. Kill some more time off the penalty. Tumbling puck. Nice job by Fenton trying to keep it in. Branchy with too many players in that corner. Now working it, and the shot from Yaster deflects and an easy save for O'Connor with 17 seconds to go on the man advantage so far. Branchy just with a couple shots. I can see Coach Burchill talking to Hannah Fenton from here. He's pointing out that Emma Duffy is all alone to the right. And instead of trying to force it in through a crowd, you might as well send it over to Duffy and try and reset. Maybe you get Newton North to chase the puck a little bit, opens up some ice. She did it again. <laughs> I think he wants to see the puck on net, too. It's awesome. Branchy had the set play, looking for the redirection as Fenton sweeps it away. Branchy's looking for the doorstep tip. And there was the penalty. Final minute of the period. Newton North now two for two on the PK. Neither team is able to score on the power play so far. Just one opportunity for Newton North, two for Braintree. Two to two the score here in the final 45 seconds. Well, the Axter's got to come over and attack that puck. She waited for it to come to her, and instead McAuliffe takes it away and keeps it alive for the Tigers. Crucial 30 seconds here. Final 30 seconds. Nice pass as the Axter's <laughs> able to get it down with her. Glove goes to the backhand, just can't get the shot off. Ferriani still with it along the goal line. Yax still down. Yax made so many moves, she almost tripped herself there. She was going to the back and had the goalie certainly beat, just couldn't tuck it in. Final five seconds of the period, and there's going to be a power play coming up as there was a cross check behind the play. Not really a smart play for the Tigers. Really a silly penalty in the final second. Well, they probably won't be able to do anything with .3 left in this second period, but that's going to be a tough way to start off the third period with your captain, Alexa McCullough, who's been very good defensively. He's going to be sitting in the penalty box at the start of the third. Like you said, she's got to go right to the goal on the faceoff, and that's what they try and do. Doesn't work, and that's the end of the second period, Brainty, with plenty of opportunities in that second frame. But after 30 minutes of hockey, it's 2-2 two two here at the Dupuis Arena. Both teams again scoring one goal in the period. It was 1-1 one, one after 1, 2-2 two two after 2. What do we have brewing for the third period, Jeff? Well, I think Braintree is about to get a little bit of a pep talk from Coach Burchill. was not too happy with the way his team finished off that second period. You could tell just from his emotion inside the bench. But so far, back and forth game, Newton North just trying to play the answer to Braintree's call. We'll see if who can take the advantage in the third period, and Braintree should be in good favor to do it, at least with that initial minute 30 on the power play to start off the third. Yep, the one bright spot heading into this intermission, a minute and a half of power play time that Braintree will have to begin the final 15 minutes. Here at the Spruce Arena, we'll take a break. Two to two the score between Braintree and Newton North.
Welcome back to the Boosters Arena third period action. Branchy on the power play to start. 2-2 is the score. And Branchy wins the faceoff. Mike Wassel and Jeff Post are on hand as Yaxter works it in the Tiger ends. Again, Branchy to open this period has a minute and a half power play. Back at the point, Fenton with it. Clean sheet ice for Branchy to work with here on this power play. Looking to take the lead. Nice work as Yaxter gets the shot through and a save. Pad stop from O'Connor. Tigers looking to jam it out. They can't. Kept jammed by Burchill. He came over to help out. Kept it alive. Nice work on the backhand. Swings it over this time to Duffy. A little bit different this time. Branchy looking for the redirection in front. And Burchill's shot is deflected wide. That time you saw Fenton go to Duffy, which is what Coach Burchill wanted earlier. So obviously the message has gotten through to this Braintree team here on the early power play in this third period. Back at the point, nobody home. 30 seconds to go in the power play. Branchy so far, two unsuccessful ones. Looking to convert here in the final 25. Nice pass as Yaxter's intent, intent was for Burchill. It's taken away. Hi. Just heard head coach Bob McDougal on an interference penalty against Braintree. He's getting it. I'm gonna call it roughing. Got something. I guess it's 13 seconds probably, before on probably the better call would be interference in that situation. So four on four hockey. They only have a minute up on the board. Use it's a minute and a half for the power play. They're still working on that. Yeah. Referee coming over, making sure they... There you there go. Goes. Had to press it a few extra times, it looked like. He's getting stuck in the cold atmosphere. There's a piece of the arena. Face-off is won by Braintree, and they able to clear it out. That'll kill the remainder of the four-on-four, four. so now Newton North will be on the man advantage for a minute and 15. This active stick for the Tigers as Seriani looks to backhand it out of the zone, and that one takes a weird bounce off the skate. It's off sides, and now it's going to be whistled down. And the face-off should come out of the zone. Four to go on the power play. 13-17 to go in the third period. Tied at three, or tied at two rather, as we play here in the third period. Branchy scored. The Newton North has alternated. Let's see if the Wamps can regain the lead here at home. Newton North right now looking for a power play chance. So far they're 0 for 1 on the power play. Shot and Ooh. what a save from Devlin. That one changed direction on the way through. Yeah, I think it hit off a chest of one of the Newton North forwards. And then Devlin just had to rotate over to her right. Final 25 seconds. 12 and a half to go. In the skates of Hall, who made the block. Wide open in front. Can't be tied up, and that one rings the bar. Oh, that one stung. Nice job. Block from Norton. Now Norton with a shorthanded chance. Already had one. Was looking for more. For the game's first goal. Back in the first. Ooh. Power play over. And a chance as Braintree has the shot covered by O'Connor. As Burchill lost an edge right in front of the scorer's table. 12 minutes on the dot to go. Here in the third, 2-2 two two the score. Burchill on the faceoff as Newton North wins it and skates it out to center. Dangerous pass as Yaxter was lurking. Seen her intercept a couple nice ones earlier in this game and had a chance to take the lead in that final 20 seconds of that second period. Just wasn't able to convert on the backhand. Here's Yaxter again. Collision as both players go down. Branchy with possession. 
It's a good defensive it. play there from Olivia Ferry. No penalty. Race to the loose puck. Swung around the boards. Kept in by Fenton. Nice job as Branchy keeps it in the attacking zone. The extra giving chase, able to pin it against the wall. Still in the zone, now a three on two up ice for Newton North. Summer's dangerous to a potential trip. Almost got called for a trip had she actually gone down. Plenty of open ice to work with as Seriani skates it up the wing. Good speed here from Seriani. Seriani with the shot and oh. it just goes wide as Hogg gives chase and now wraps it around looking for Seriani. We look one direction to the other for Seriani. And she's got to get their offense going here though while she got the puck down. Would have liked to have seen that shot hit the goal though. Yeah, just maybe, maybe create a potential rebound. Sent off the board as Norton gives chase. No icing. Nice catch going across the grain. Working by the defense of Summers. Sent behind Devlin with Fenton. Beginning possession. Back at the blue line. McCall of shot. Loose and a save. Second chance and a third. Rebound and a fourth. And wow. Devlin somehow clamps down. <laughs> First one pops out of her glove. Newton North still right in front of the net. Try and poke it in. She just kept rotating right there with the Newton North offense. He just shut down that entire side of the goal. At least four saves credited on that potential chance. Yeah. And it all started because the initial shot popped out of her glove. Two on one developing. Yachter has that one knocked away by McAuliffe. McAuliffe has done a tremendous job keeping up with some of the speedy forwards of Braintree. Going to the backhand and a save by Devlin. Trying to go between the legs. And Devlin able to squeeze the pads. And Devlin's made five stops in the last 30 seconds to keep this one tied at two. She's done a tremendous job every time Newton North. They try to move to their left, Devlin's right. She just continues to slide over and not allow that side of the net. Off the faceoff. And somehow it gets by the skate of Yaxter. Now back at center as Newton North looks to regroup. Final 9.20. Of a tie game at two. Stimson working into the zone. Nice move. Has one goal on the game. Has that one go into the body of the defender. That was lighted in front. Looking oh. for Stimson. Looking for the redirect in front. A little off the mark there for Stimson who was parked in front of the net. Otherwise that's a, probably an easy goal. Puck wide, and now back at the blue line. Both players battling for it now. Branky sends his three players over to the wall, trying to jam it loose, and they do. Seriani works her way all the way around. Second time she's gone by two defenders. That save from O'Connor. Seriani with a lot of speed here in this period to race out all of the Newton North offense. Or defense, I should say. Nasty collision as Norton got knocked down. Surprised to see the hands stay down that time. Norton goes for a tumble again. Now one on two. And the Tigers work it around Summers. The shot. And they don't score. Now they do. <laughs> on the putback, I think the initial shot went off the bar. Popped oh. loose in the slot. Went behind the net of Devlin and then... Nice job there, Rachel Hamilton, the senior, just hung with it, gets the wrap around. The Tigers with their first lead of the game. So Newton North takes their first lead of the game, going up by the score of 3-2 with 7.50 to go, and Braintree's going to have their hands full now, looking for the equalizer. These two teams are very evenly matched. Although the record for Newton North doesn't indicate that. Remember, they did beat Braintree to open up the season three to one. Wow. 
740 to go, and Braintree's going to need one more to at least tie this. At the very least, Braintree wants a point out of this game. Yeah, Played are, well enough to get one. These are the games you need that point, too. A team that might well be already out of it for hopes of making the MIA South sectional. Braintree, as I said, they need eight points with ten games remaining. So Hamilton with the go-ahead goal for Newton North. Still on sides as Birchall's shot from the point was deflected away by O'Connor. Chance for Braintree oh. in front is still loose right in the crease. And Stimson not able to tuck it home. Good look there from Stimson again off of Birchall's rebound that she took from the right side. O'Connor's been pretty darn good here in the latter stages of this game. She's had a couple of rushes here and they haven't been able to do anything with it. Nothing to show for it at least. Shot from the point. And it was loose as Duffy calls for it. Both players go down. Fenton gives chase with six and a half to go. Kept it at the blue line for the Tigers. Wrapped around the boards. Wamps going to need one here in the final six and a half. Try and tie this one. Back at the point, and that one goes wide. A lot of offensive zone time for the Tigers. Big collision as Norton lays the body in. That one goes between the legs of Devil who's down. Oh. Braintree needs to clear that. Lucky break there for Braintree. Devlin went down. Newton North had no one there to pick up the offense while she was down. They still had control off the rebound. There was a centering pass. No black and orange jersey in sight, though. Dangerous pass and a giveaway. The shot well wide. Virtual can't be happy about that one. He gets lucky again. Newton North can't put it in. Wamp's well, trying to get a little too fancy there. Looking for... Uh, Line pass. The extra gets tangled up. And now back the other way come the Tigers. So hungry for more after taking the first lead of the game. Looking to take the two goal advantage and potentially put this one away. Like you said, Jeff, Branchy would really like to take at least a point here in a game that they probably should win. But right now, Branchy finds himself down by a goal. Caught a big break there. Newton North should have clamped down on that pass. Instead, it bounces off of two colliding Tigers, and Branch was able to get it into the offensive zone. Nice slap pass from Fenton. Saw the defender slide down, would have blocked the shot. Instead, goes for the pass around the boards. Wide open in front, and that went off the skates of Stimson. Branch is getting the chances in front of the zone, but they're just not able to get the stick down on it as Birchill works her way into the zone. Going one on three, looking for somebody in front, now goes behind the net. Send it back to the point of the shot from Duffy, doesn't get much on it. Birchill just trying to do that all herself. Got it set back up. Sides against Braintree with 3.55 to go. Time's starting to become a factor now for the Wamps. Still enough time, but you wonder how early Braintree would pull the goal. Yeah, just thinking that, keep your eyes on Molly Devlin. What point? I think around a minute and a half. Probably doable. Big go. interception. Seriani with the turnover created. Doesn't get much on the shot. It might have been blocked. Zayden, I think, got her stick down on it. You hear the contact. Now a chance for the Tigers, two on two. And a miscommunication. Tried to drop it off and no one was there to pick it up except for Braintree. Even though it recovered pretty quick though. Sent behind the net. That one gets past Hoff. And now 
The shot from the high slot goes wide. 3-10 to go. And that pass eludes all the defense, all the way back yeah, down. Nice no I thought that was off Braintree stick. No, that was, that was actually a Newton North pass. That was a Newton North pass that went all the way down the zone. Had the defender wide open at the blue line, just wasn't able to connect. And now Brink is going to have to regroup here with two and a half to go. Mitchell Hamilton, a phenomenal job to outrace Fenton. Just more effort from Hamilton to get to that puck. Briefly kept it alive there for the Tigers. Mitchell trying to get his offense moving. A little sluggish. That one pops up at center ice. 2.10 to go. Waiting to see how long Devlin will stay in the goal. Got to gain control of it first. You got to get the puck out of the zone. Newton North doing themselves a lot of favors right now with this one pinned up. Tied up. Killed a few more seconds off the clock. Branch is going to take a timeout with 1.56 to go. Faceoff will be in Branch's zone, so they're not going to pull the goalie yet. But probably a good timeout right now, trying to set things up and definitely set up a faceoff win. You set up a faceoff win play and a faceoff loss. You want to set up both, but right now, Branch is going to need a big faceoff win to the right of Devlin. A little bit of luck, too. They've been able to get a couple of possessions down and control it in Newton North territory, but. Give credit to O'Connor. She's done a nice job as long as the defense in front of her. McCullough, notably, she's done an excellent job staying toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of these speedy Braintree forwards. 156 left. Braintree's got to find some sort of magic here after the faceoff. If North gains any sort of sustained possession, it's going to be tough to overcome. So this 156 to go, Branch trails 3 to 2, the first time they trailed all game. It came here in the third as Hamilton gave the Tigers the lead after the initial shot went over the bar. Look from here like it may have been in. You heard the crowd potentially cheering for the Tigers and then on the second chance was able to wrap it home. 156 to go, face off to the right of Devlin. They got their top line out there. Virtual Stimson. Yaxter, Fenton, and Duffy. Played back to the point. The shot from McAuliffe. And a save by Devlin. Good face-off win by Newton North. Well, Deidre Burchill getting the hook from her own coach in the face-off circle. Not having much luck. Yaxter able to tie it up. And it goes to the end wall. That's just what Newton North wants to do is tie it up. Keep the puck in the zone. Keep Devlin on the net. Somebody! 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 Trouble getting out of their own zone here. Just 90 seconds to go now. North, all they need to do is just contest the puck. And so far they've done a nice job of that. Braintree's had no chance to even move it out of their own zone. Devlin has to take another face-off. Offensive zone face-off for the Tigers with 1.21 to go. Frank, you out of timeouts. I wonder if Coach Burchill is just going to try to stick with this top line for the remainder of 121. You would assume so. Yeah, they've made a couple of changes. Braintree's sticking with their guns. Wrapped around. Braintree still can't get it out of their zone. High off the glass, and finally Braintree works it out of their zone. Stimson had the stick down in the skates, no call. Final minute now. Great job, Natalie Ferry again. She's been another key contributor for Newton North. She got it right back in Braintree territory. I think the Wamps had it out for maybe five seconds. Sent to the vacant spot along the boards. Ferry beats her there. Finally, Braintree with something moving offensively. Here, Here comes Burchill, Devlin pulled. Branch with the extra attacker on. 
Seriani, the extra attacker, as the Tigers look to send it back to center. Duffy's going to find it. Now with the empty net to shoot at, and they miss it. Final 10 seconds, Branch is going to need a miracle. And it doesn't look like the Wamps are going to get it. As it's tied up in their own zone. The one less stretch pass. Looking for Yaxter and the Tigers. Come through with a come from behind 3-2 win. Here at the Zapusas Arena as Braintree falls. 3-2 in a hard fought game. Both two teams, both these teams really deserving of points. But Braintree not getting anything here today. Losing by one and after one, it was tied. After two, it was tied. But here in the third, the only goal scored by the Tigers to give them the advantage. And, Jeff, it was a good game for Braintree, but it wasn't good enough here today. Yeah, they had some miscues and really kind of fell apart in that third period. Weren't able to do much with the puck offensively. Some good looks. I mean, O'Connor played a great game in net for the Tigers. We get their third win of the season, and Braintree misses out on a couple of key two points that they could have had, not even getting the one with the tie. So... I'm sure Coach Burchill not going to be too happy with the way that his team finished that game out. But you regroup and hope for better fortunes next time out when they play Wellesley. I think it all started with the opening power play in that third period. They weren't able to convert. Missed opportunities. And missed out advantage. on the chances. And now Braintree drops to 5-4 and 2 on the season with a 3-2 loss here at home. But until next time, for Jennifer Goalie, Jeff Poster, I'm Mike Wassel. We'll see you next time. <laughs>